Hello and welcome to today's tutorial. This topic we're going to cover commercial property coverages. My name is Carly Rahm. I'm the marketing representative for Griffin Underwriting. Uh, we'll go over a brief uh, introduction about Griffin Underwriting Services, otherwise known as GUS. We'll touch on some vocabulary, common exposures, common exclusions with optional coverages, uh, some of our top appetite, some selling tips, quoting instructions, and then uh, as with every tutorial, I like to give a contact list should you have any questions at a later time and need to contact us. So Griffin was founded in 1928. We still are family owned and operated by the Griffin family. We were one of the first surplus lines brokers in our region to be granted binding authority by Lloyd's of London. We're very proud of that. We had just over 100 employees on three different offices throughout the Pacific Northwest offering solutions for personal lines, commercial lines, transportation, and brokerage insurance. We've written over $95 million in premium to date, and we are licensed in all 50 states, allowing us to work with agents nationwide. So if you're unfamiliar with surplus lines or non-standard ENS markets, if you think about all the market share uh, that's out there available, sitting in a box on your desk, and inside that box is a ball. Inside the ball is the admitted or standard market share, the markets that you, the insurance agent, have access to. The space in between the ball and the box is the non-admitted or non-standard market share. This is where we reside. So if you want to think of it in a very simple way, you, the agent, if you can't place a specific policy, maybe it's um, unusual, uh, unusual type of, of risk or business, maybe they're new in business, maybe there's a uh, lost history, uh, for whatever reason, maybe you don't have access to, the, to that particular market. If you can't place that business in the ball, don't let the business walk out your door. Contact us. Let's see if we can broker a policy for you so that you can help maintain that customer service for your, for your insured uh, and we can help you write that business. When we're talking about some vocabulary for commercial property, we're going to go over just real quick policy forms. There's basic, broad, and special. I hope all of you remember that from your producer days, producer class 101. We've got property valuation, actual cash value. Um, that is the cash value minus depreciation. We've got replacement cost. So that's getting something to uh, replacing something brand new. We've got functional building valuation. This replaces uh, co-insurance. Uh, An ordinance of law typically is included. Then we've got agreed value. This is the stated amount. This also replaces a co-insurance clause, um, and this is uh, agreed upon at the beginning of the policy. Typically, when we're talking about co-insurance clauses, they're set at 80, 90, or 100%. Uh, all three are available for this particular type of coverage, depending on the carrier. And then there's earned premiums and fees. Uh, this is a 25% earned premium with 100% fees. Common exposures uh, for commercial property, the owner's building, any tenant improvements or betterments, business content, kitchen equipment, business cash flow and rental income, stock and inventory, as well as any business income. Common perils include hostile fire and smoke, water damage, natural disaster, theft and vandalism, accidents, criminal acts, and spoilage. When we're talking about covered property, buildings and tenant improvements or betterments, these are listed on the declaration. It includes the completed additions, fixtures, permanently installed machinery and equipment. Uh, we do offer coverage of $250,000 uh, included for 30 days or cancellation, whichever comes first for newly acquired property. When we're talking about BPP, uh, this is located in the building or within 100 feet of the premises as listed on the declarations. Uh, this can include furniture, machinery and equipment, stocks, tenant betterments, etc. Uh, that newly acquired coverage, uh, it's written up to 100,000 included for 30 days or cancellation, whichever comes first. And then you've got debris removal. This is the expense to remove debris of covered property by a covered cause of loss. The form typically includes 25% of the physical loss to covered property within the limits, inside the limits. Uh, so for example, if you have a policy with a $1 million limit and suffer a $500,000 loss, 125 of that, 500,000 will be for debris removal. Property that is typically not covered, foundation and underground pipes, flues or drains, animals, unless they are owned by others and boarded to you, automobiles, including vehicles or self-propelled machines, 
bridges, railways, walks, patios, and other paved surfaces, bulkheads, pilings, piers, wharves, and docks, and then property that is not listed on the deck page at the location. Some common exclusions for commercial property. We've got ordinance of law, business income, earth movement, dishonest and criminal acts, mechanical breakdown, DIC, artificially generated current, utility services, and theft. Quite often these common exclusions can either be endorsed back on the policy or covered under a different policy. So, optional coverages, business income. Remember this was a common exclusion, but it is an optional coverage. This includes rent, payroll of key employees, leasing new equipment, hiring temporary employees, and additional advertising. Uh, it's coverage for loss of revenues and extra uh, expenses. Most common method is typically uh, set for a monthly limit with an agreed value for a maximum period of time. This is uh, set at the beginning of each policy. Ordinance of law, this covers the damage due to enforcement of laws and ordinances. Uh, you can choose coverage A, you can co choose coverage B or coverage C. You can get all three, you can get two of them, you can get one of them. Uh, what's really nice is I always think of ordinance of law as an a la carte coverage. Equipment breakdown. This covers damages to equipment and related losses. It must be sudden and accidental. Normal wear and tear is excluded. Uh, think power surges, electrical arcing, like short circuiting, rupture, and explosion. It covers the property, a loss of income, spoilage, pollution cleanup and removal, uh, ex expediting expenses, computer equipment, valuable papers, and data restoration. When we're talking about crime and employee dishonesty, it covers damages due to criminal acts. So limits are scheduled on a supplemental declaration page. It can be written on an occurrence or claims made basis. Uh, and some common, com common causes are employee theft, forgery and alteration, robbery and burglary, computer fraud, theft or disappearance of money and securities. And then property extensions, this extends or increases coverage to selective property exposures. So most carriers will extend coverage limits to items like outdoor signs, um, spoilage, water, backup, and overflow of computer and uh, computer equipment. So what is our appetite? What can we help you with? Uh, we can write vacant buildings, habitational, builder's risk, uh, DIC and earthquake, and then what we like to put under miscellaneous, so things like adult family homes, hangars, warehouses, store facilities, bars, restaurants, and taverns, strip malls. This is just a really short list of some of our top appetite. We have a very broad appetite. So if you don't see what you're looking for on this list, that does not mean that we don't necessarily do it. I would say reach out to us. It's better to ask the question than let that business walk out your door. When we're talking about vacant buildings, uh, the eligible risk, the vacant and partially vacant buildings, uh, it can be a leased space. Uh, it can be foreclosed properties. However, it cannot be a bankrupt property. Uh, residential pools are acceptable as long as they are fenced in. Quite often carriers will require pictures. Uh, and we do offer in-house authority if the building has been vacant for 18 months or less, but if it's been vacant for longer, we can send that over to our brokerage department. We do have some options. Some features of this product, buildings and business personal property coverages are available. A TIV in-house limit can be offered up to 4 million, but through our brokerage department, we can offer higher limits. Uh, special form and replacement costs are available for some risks. Special warranties can apply for theft, water damage, and vandalism. And it can be written as a monoline policy, or we can package this together with a GL policy. When we're talking about habitational, think apartments, motels, hotels, college housing, room and boarding houses, new ventures, uh, pools, playgrounds, fitness centers, clubhouses, lakes, ponds, and sports courts, all are acceptable. Uh, depending on the carrier and the location, quite often we'll need some pictures, especially when we're talking about pools, uh, lakes and ponds, etc. Uh, we are very competitive with older buildings or buildings in higher protection classes. What we consider an older building is 30 years or older. And then some features for this type of policy, TIV and house limits up to 3 million, but we can go higher in our brokerage department. Uh, some optional coverages are available like innkeeper's liability, tenant discrimination, as well as crime. And again, this can be written as a monoline policy or packaged together with a GL policy. 
when we're talking about builder's risk, uh, can be vacant with renovations. It can also be new construction. And we will accept partially completed, completed and construction lapse properties. Uh, it can be written on either a property or inland marine form with limits up to two million. We can go higher in our brokerage department. We can write this policy with a replacement cost. And then the building materials and supplies while in transit or uh, at an unscheduled storage location, we can offer a $5,000 limit. Um, higher limits are, are available with carrier approval. And this type of policy is a 25% minimum earned on most annual terms. Earthquake and DIC. So we can offer commercial uh, Commercial Earthquake and DIC in Washington, Oregon, Alaska, Idaho, and Utah. We do have uh, capability in some other states uh, by referral through our brokerage department. We can write these policies for any type of construction and the buildings do not have to be retrofitted. Uh, there is no limit on the age of the building. Um, we are very competitive with those older buildings. Uh, we can write policies up to uh, 11 million in limits with the TIV per location also available. Replacement costs or actual cash uh, value, both are typically available, depends on the carrier. And then we offer deductibles at 5, 10, or 15%. Uh, also, coinsurance is available set at 80, 90, or 100%. When you're talking to your insured about commercial property, don't be afraid to use some claim examples. Make it relevant or make it tangible to them. You know, what type of business are they doing? What is their exposure? Use those examples uh, of others that are doing the same thing. Pointing out various exposures as well as the costs associated with them. You know, the, the old adage goes that, um, you know, insurance isn't real until you actually need it and everybody thinks they're never going to need it. Well, making it real pointing out those exposures, pointing out the costs associated, especially when you're dealing with small to medium-sized businesses, one claim can make it to where they have to close their business. Uh, take advantage of coverage gaps by cross-selling other endorsements and policies. Um, you know, pointing out those exposures, letting them know you have solutions for those exposures. You wanna make sure that they are fully protected so that they can continue to operate comfortably in their business if there is never a claim. Get testimonials and recommendations from your other clients and get permission to share those with, with future clients. And then when you're having these conversations, especially when you're talking about uh, coverages that you think that they would need due to their exposure, but maybe for whatever reason they don't want to get that particular coverage, uh, have them sign a rejection letter. Keep it in their, in their file. That way, if there's ever a claim down the road, they can't come back to you and say, well, you never told me I needed this. And then always, always, always follow up after binding. Um, I can't stress this enough. There are some agents who they only talk to their insureds at the time of renewal. There's a lot that can happen within you know, that policy term, that 12 months. Um, you know, businesses can change, size of business can change, operations can change. Checking in with your clients on a regular basis is just good practices. And it shows that you care about their, their well-being. When you're ready to quote commercial property, we do need the Accords 125 as well as the Accord 140. If you would like to get GL coverage, uh, we do need the Accord 126. All of our applications can be found on our website. Uh, some t uh, particular risks do need those supplemental applications. Um, a good example, apartments, bars, restaurants, taverns, landscapers, janitors, etc. If you're not sure if there's a supplemental application that is needed or what applications you need to fill out, reach out to us, we're happy to help. Um, once you get everything completed and get all of the information, you're gonna scan everything in and email it to submissions at gogus.com. That goes to our uh, processing department. They'll input your applications into our system, assign a submission number, get it over to the correct department for our underwriters to start working on your quote. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. For those Allstate agents, you can email us at csr at gogus.com or you can give us a call, 844-859-1766. For those non-Allstate or independent agents, you can email us at info at gogus.com or call 800-562-8095. Again, my name is Carly. I'm the marketing representative. Please feel free to reach out to me at any time. I'm always happy to help. We want to thank you so much for taking the time to join us for this tutorial and for working with us. We look forward to working with you more in the future. Have a great day.